Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our innovation and tech segment, brought to you by Caldwell Soames and OGPay.com. Today, we're featuring Anthony Day. Now, Anthony is the head of strategy and marketing for Midnight. They're a data protection blockchain built with zero knowledge proof technology. He's also the founder of the Blockchain Won't Save the World podcast. His career spans over 20 years in strategy, tech, and innovation, helping large organizations and startups harness the benefits of using decentralized technologies to create commercially viable businesses and safe digital transformation. Today, he's joining me to chat artificial intelligence, digital evolution, the metaverse, and his thoughts on a robot-operated world. Now, the concept of the metaverse is based on key functions it will be able to provide. The key promises include a decentralized world, identity verification, smart contracts, and ETPs, what we call exchange-traded products. Now, even when you combine that with generative artificial intelligence systems, it might feel like we've taken a giant leap closer to a sci-fi reality where AIs are physical entities all around us. Computer-based AI appears to be advancing at an unprecedented rate. Could it be that the future AI system will need robotic bodies to interact with the world? And if so, will nightmarish ideas like the self-repairing, shape-shifting T-1000 robot from the Terminator 2 movie come to fruition? And could a robot be created that could live forever? Lots of questions, very few experts to ask, unless, of course, you're tuning in right now here to chat artificial intelligence, privacy, and data protection, the metaverse, and how to put it all into perspective is the amazing Anthony Day. Welcome to the show, superstar. Zen, thank you so much for having me back. That's a lot to cover, but I'm going to do my best. You are the expert. So talk to us about, firstly, what exciting projects you have lined up in privacy and data protection with blockchain and Web3 apps? Yes, thank you so much. So since we last spoke, I have joined a new team. The team is called Midnight. It's a data protection blockchain that's been incubated or developed by IOG, the same team that was a major contributor to the Cardano blockchain. And this is a little bit different. I've been working in Web3 and working in digital transformation more broadly for a very long time. And in the back of my mind, I was starting to notice, probably not deliberately, but the, the data has been accruing, right? If you look at um, the last two or three years, if you look at um, the rise of, of data platforms, if you look at the rise of social media, if you look at some of the activities following lockdown, you start thinking, well, how many, how many organizations have my data? What are they doing with it? And, and how, do we, how do we enable better applications, better ways of doing things without putting people's privacy at risk? And so Midnight's entire focus is that we believe in decentralized applications. We believe in unstoppable, easy to deploy apps that anybody can work with. We believe in open source code. And we also believe that we can have compliant, regulatory friendly applications that can be transparent or report when they need to, but also preserve people's pr privacy, protect IP, protect corporate secrets every, 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 every time it's not required to be transparent. So apps that do that, think of it as the experience of singing karaoke in a car. Right? Imagine that feeling of freedom when you don't worry about who's looking, you don't worry about you being scrutinized, you're just in flow. We want to do that for people, applications, businesses, governments, everything. And we're going to do incredible. that with blockchain technology. You're doing incredible stuff. And, and we do live in the era of data sovereignty for the original producer, right? And we are all about making sure that our data is preserved and that it's it's not being, you know, um, present it to bad actors, if you will. So you're you're paving the way for a system that coming into Web3 is greatly needed. Now, you seem to be covering AI in many of your posts and you're very tech savvy. How do you think that artificial intelligence is gonna help shape the metaverse? And more importantly, what does that mean for Web3 users? I love that we're seeing the proliferation of AI at the moment because it demonstrates how once you can get an application into the hands of users, things can move incredibly quickly, right? Some of the challenges with Web3 is the infrastructure is a little bit harder to construct when you have to create a network, when you have to create um, a community around a particular project and so on. With AI, you've just got a huge amount of com compute on demand. And so you can kind of point that at anything you like as soon as it can also interpret um, human language. So large language models, the, the breakthrough with AI is that you can kind of type or prompt whatever you like and the AI can come back with something. So anywhere where you can get a human interface, you can get relatively fast, relatively low latency compute to respond to you. So that could be NPC characters in the metaverse talking to you in human language. 
That could be generation of worlds, assets, images. That could be creation of fashion or of art, of things around you in real time based on stimulus from individuals, from companies, from players, from real time live quotes. That becomes incredibly um, powerful when you don't have the latency or the lag between getting a brief, getting an input, and then spending a little bit of time creating something and getting it back. AI has this shortened is, that cycle dramatically. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, even just in the perspective that you just put it, AI, what, what were we doing without artificial intelligence is the question. And when you look at the global metaverse market, it's estimated to surpass 1.3 trillion, right, by the year 2030. And this growth is, is going to be driven by newly adopted virtual economy trends combined with the rise of both crypto and online games. And the metaverse is likely going to reshape social lifestyles. And now when you when you're introducing artificial intelligence, you are now treading into very, very dangerous ground because without data protection and preserving uh, protocols that are going to be put in place to protect the end user, it could be disastrous. Now, look, the Sandbox is a, is a popular decentralized virtual world. It clocked in more than 1 million users last year. Now there are over 200,000 active users each month. And in the Sandbox, Anthony, users can connect with their digital identity. They can make friends and even have real emotions, to your point, what you were saying, through these experiences. And it doesn't matter where users are from or how old they are. The Sandbox is a global digital nation. And with this in mind, the platform has the potential to reshape social lifestyles. I mean, you have 3 billion people are now digitally native. And the way to interact is now with avatars in social worlds and across social media platforms. So it feels like we should be jumping into some level of investment surrounding the space. In your perspective, what kind of business opportunities have you come across in the metaverse that have stood out? And what catalysts are needed for Web3 and the metaverse to become more mainstream per se? Two very important questions. I, I would segment the first part of the applications or the, the opportunities are B2C, B2B, and potentially also governments as well looking to get involved. So B2C, all of these applications, all these metaverses are applications. Right? It's an interface between human, machine, and then other humans to do stuff that we've always been looking to do. So whether that is to play, to transact, to work, to learn, these are immersive spaces where we can do those things differently, potentially at a lower cost, because they're immersive and virtual as opposed to happening in a physical space. They can be more instant or they can be more immediate because you can convene in the metaverse without having to travel. You can then plug in technology and capability like artificial intelligence that can be generative. It can generate fun. It can generate research. It can generate visualization. You can, you can play music. You can generate music if you like, based on certain inputs from those individuals. For, for, for the content creation economy, it's hugely powerful. But then also from an education perspective, if you think about learning and wanting to level up, it, it's a bit corny, but you remember the, the, the scene in the Matrix where it's like, okay, I, I need to learn Kung Fu, or I need to learn Chinese, or I need to be able to speak to somebody in a foreign language, which isn't mine. An AI can plug in and we can have real-time interpretation such that anybody in the world can connect on anything and with fun as well. I saw a video from Simon Sinek recently, which was not work hard, play hard. That's a terrible way to live your life, but work smart, play always. And I think the play always part is where the metaverse is going to excel in a whole bunch of different spheres. Yeah, interesting. You know, humans.ai is the blockchain of AI, so to speak. And it's being used to mint super skills, to your point, and voices that users can apply to avatars within different virtual worlds. And this puts, um, you know, so it puts things into perspective because humans.ai lets users create digital voices, exactly what you're talking about, speak in different languages and implement synthetic voices that may prevent discrimination. So you can enter a Zoom call with a different voice, for instance, which could prevent discrimination if you wish to remain completely anonymous. And this will certainly reshape social lifestyles. Then voices are minted as non-fungible tokens to give users true ownership of their voice clips. So one can argue that hiding behind an avatar is not authentic and feels like catfish. What do you say to this? I'd go back to my singing karaoke in the car, right? If, if, I, if I feel like me, if I feel like myself today and you're gonna get the best version of me because I'm in flow, I'm in my energy, I'm, I look like this, I'm wearing a pink t-shirt, whatever else it is, that's how I feel today, that's how you're gonna get my best. If my best is actually about me wearing something that's on fire, flamboyant, where I have a different voice and a different facial features or maybe I'm wearing earrings, whatever that could be, I think the metaverse will empower people to explore versions of themselves that allow them to be in flow state more often. And I, I'd say more power to them because rather than having to force 
who they think they should be into a certain scenario, whether that's work, play, social interaction, whatever it could be, we can create more opportunities for people to be the versions of themselves they'd like to explore more of the time, providing they're not misrepresenting themselves. And that's where digital identity, authentication, zero knowledge proofs to some extent can say, you know, I, I, I trust or I can verify that you are authentic or that you are an authentic person, you're not a robot, but I don't need to know exactly who you are, how old you are, where you are in the world. Interesting. And my final question, like, I, I love it that you're such a, a, you know, believer in, you know, let's go out there and use artificial intelligence to bring out the best in us in our everyday. I mean, I love that perspective. There's a lot of people right now that are completely petrified of artificial intelligence with their jobs becoming obsolete and data privacy and feudalism, online feudalism and things of that nature. But I love it that you're such a fan. Now, eventually, you know, uh, the metaverse, you know, we could talk about Will metaverse interactions versus physical interactions become a thing? So while the metaverse has already started demonstrating, to your point, how people can engage socially in virtual worlds, incorporating artificial intelligence within these environments will likely create better engagement, right? Yet it remains questionable if social interactions in the metaverse will eventually replace physical engagements. What are your thoughts? That's a tough question. It's going to be a race to the top. It's where, back to my point around having more fun, is where, where do we have more fun? Now, you know, most of us don't get played to have video games, but in a digital environment, that's where I suspect a lot of people say, well, that's where, that's where I'm enjoying the most. That's where I'm having the most um, exhilarating experiences. It may not be out on a football, soccer, rugby field. I get that in video games. And there's a, there's a tension already between people going outside, playing, surfing, having fun and swimming versus staying indoors, getting onto Call of Duty and kind of um, blowing up or saving the world. There's a tension there already in our leisure time. We're increasingly moving towards remote digital workplaces. And so we're already seeing more of our work time be digital and remote. And so there's a constant battle between which is physical and which is digital and which creates more value. And then the, the biggest final question there is who decides what's going to be valuable? Who has a choice? Right? My boss can tell me we're going to be what this is going to be a remote or non-remote company and you get to choose to work here or not. In the gig economy, when there's more freedom around how we create, how we create value and how we work and how we play, it's going to come down to the individual and back to the, the risks that you talked about. Is everybody going to have enough foresight or wisdom to make sure they're getting a healthy balance of uh, defining what's healthy for them? Because I don't think that should be regulated per se, but human interaction is important. Physical contact is important. How we feel in our bodies is important. And so we've got to strike a balance there somehow. We have to strike a balance. And what I will leave off by saying, because we're out of time, is even the kids, right? Like the, the Gen Alpha, it's it's a great example that eventually even the sandbox users, I'm going to go back to this game. It's a very popular one. People identify, you know, with understanding the rules of it, right? Even if you're young or old, you know sandbox. Mm -hmm. But sandbox users will be able to incorporate their own physical movements into their digital avatars, resulting in a more personalized and realistic characteristic, right? And the sandbox is partnering with Kinetics and they're a technology startup specializing in AI to bring emotes um, these are animations like we've talked about that express emotion to video games and virtual worlds. And these emotes are now going to allow users to animate avatars through customized, customized dance moves and physical interactions displayed in reality. Um, they've developed a unique AI that allows users to record movements with a phone's camera, which can then be applied to avatars. So this is absolutely incredible stuff where we're headed. And yeah. Well, we, we are out of time. We could talk all day. We have a whole segment here that we should dedicate to this, but we are kindred spirits and we love to talk about the same stuff. Thank you so much for coming on, Anthony. You're incredible. Likewise, Anne. Love to be on your show all the time. Appreciate it and have a great rest of your day. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames and OGPay.com. That was the incredible Anthony Day, head of strategy and marketing at Midnight. He's a LinkedIn top voice keynote speaker and leading Web3 blockchain expert. You can check him out on LinkedIn at Anthony JJ Day. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation, or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OGPay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OGPay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Com.